Hello, uh, I am Iftekhar and Ayatollah. Uh, by training, I am a civil engineer and urban planner. I'm Maksud Sina. By training, I'm an architect and urban planner. Like by profession, we are now garbiologists. We work, uh, <laughs> we work with garbage now. Okay. So, <laughs> sometimes people call us garbage men. So, it's also, we take it as a compliment. Okay, so uh, before we go into the, our presentation, uh, where we would like to share with you how to convert waste into resource, I would like to share with you a brief story how we became a garbiologist. So I did my master's research on solid waste management, and my research topic was trying to identify best possible solution to recycle waste of Dhaka city. And my colleague, uh, Maksud Sinha, he has also done his master's research on solid waste management. And his research topic was how to integrate the informal sector waste pickers into the formal sector of waste management. So that was our research background. And we completed our master's research in 1993. And uh, as a young graduate from university, uh, with full of energy and idea, we thought that we should do something for the city. And initially, our idea was that uh, we should design a waste treatment facility, uh, and then we should take it to the city government, Dhaka City Corporation, or any organization, and they should implement our idea. And for one year, uh, uh, we moved from different government departments. Uh, we went to Dhaka City Corporation, explained them, this is the idea. You can convert waste into resource and we are willing to give you free services. Please do implement our idea. And for one year, no one was listening to us. At one point of time, uh, one government official told us that if you think your idea is so great, you can convert waste into resource, why don't you do it by yourself? And that was the time we thought that we should not wait for, for anyone. We should not go after public officials asking them to implement our project. We should do it by ourselves. And that's where we started in 1994 a project uh, in a small area of Dhaka City uh, trying to convert waste into resource. And, and since 1994, we are still working on, on the waste sector. So before I go into detail, I would just like to share with you a one quotation uh, which has uh, inspired both of us uh, immensely. Waste is merely a raw material in the wrong place. We really believe in this concept that waste is a raw material, and in the next few minutes you will see how we have been trying to convert waste into resource. So we have divided our talk into three parts. First, we should uh, discuss about the problem. What are the problems? I think waste is one of the most visible problems in Bangladesh, and we all are suffering from this. And uh, then we'll show about, uh, talk about our technology, what solution we are giving. And on the last end, we'll show you what are the impacts of our intervention. So, so if you talk about uh, waste management, we should first know about the uh, urban population, because Bangladesh is one of the densely populated uh, country, and we are witnessing population increase and urbanization. You can look, you can see, have a look at this uh, chart, that in 1991, population, our population was only 20 million. But gradually, now it is, in 2014, almost 40 million in the urban area. And as World Bank, World Bank statistics, it will be 47,000 uh, uh, tons every uh, uh, urban area, every day, will be generating waste. So there are some, uh, this is, you can see, have a look at this that in 1991 it was only 6,000 tons per day, urban waste generation per day, but we are expecting it to grow by 2025, 47,000 tons per day. So this is a phenomena is happening, but we have to do something about it. Waste will grow, but at, at present what we are doing, the cities, they are collecting the waste, transporting it and dumping it. This is the simplest, simplest and easiest solution they are having and it is creating all sorts of problems. You can see this picture is a very interesting picture where you can see a citizen walking beside the waste. Municipal trucks are there to collect the waste and informal sector retrieving waste from the uh, recyclables from the waste. So all the partners, they are disjointed, they're not connected. And this is one of the things we are working on, how we can connect people and government and private sector. And 
for as a result, you can see that only 40 to 50 percent of the waste can be collected by the city. And this is another picture of a city where you can see that Bangladesh is a land-hungry country. We don't have enough space to dispose of waste. And most of the time, waste are dumped in the low-lying area and water bodies. It is creating all sorts of problems. You can see that village far away, river, water bodies, it can have create all the pollutions. And cities are spending more than 10 to 15 $30 per ton to manage the waste, taxpayers' money. They're, they're spending this money to create all sorts of problems. Interestingly, you'll find that 80% of this waste is organic, which is biodegradable, and we are focusing, we started to focus on this issue. So this is an interesting chart, I don't want to go in detail, but a major portion of the waste is organic, biodegradable, which is not, which is the, uh, we can say that it's a nutrient, but it is becoming pollutant when it's becoming waste. Waste is recycled by informal sector extensively. We have another problem in Bangladesh. You can see that organic matter depletion from the soil of Bangladesh. This is a uh, food security issue of Bangladesh because it is due to crop, high cropping intensity, excessive chemical fertilizer use, pesticides. This is the problem because we uh, we have to feed more mouths. And because of that, we are exhausting our soil. And this is the, one of the government statistics. You can see that uh, almost more than 60% of the land we have, cultivable land, has less than 1.7% uh, uh, organic matter. Good soil, we need 3.5%, more than that, organic matter in the soil. So it is missing. So right now, what is happening in most of the developing countries, including Bangladesh, that because of this end of pipe solution, we are having problem. It can create health impact. 40, more than 40 diseases we can have from this waste-borne uh, disease. And it is polluting our groundwater. It may take thousands of years, millions of dollars to treat your water, make it drinkable. And also we have another problem. From waste, we generate methane. It's a greenhouse gas. It has global impact for climate change. So I'll request Iftakar, you can go for the next slides. So what, what we, are, we are trying to do with, uh, with our project is that we are trying to address the three issues, growing urban waste problem, and if you look at the waste composition, 80% of our waste is organic in nature, which is biodegradable. There is another problem in Bangladesh, in the rural areas, especially the agricultural land has a very low organic matter content, and there is a greenhouse gas emission from the landfill sites. So what we have done that we have developed a technology where all the three problems can be solved in a, in a, with a single solution. So all we have to do is that by converting the, the waste uh, into organic fertilizer, we can, we, can, we can use it in the rural areas to increase the crop productivity. And by doing this kind of project, uh, you can actually reduce the greenhouse gas emission because when you are doing aerobic composting method, there is no greenhouse gas emission. So in the conventional approach of waste management, what is happening is that we collect mixed waste, bring it to waste bins or to transfer stations, and then we dump it in landfill sites. But in our project areas, what we are doing is that we are promoting segregation of waste. If you want to convert waste into resource, the basic thing is to segregate the waste into dry and wet matter. Then we collect waste directly from the source and from the household or from the markets, and then we take the waste to a, uh, to a recycling center where we use the technology which we have developed and convert it into organic fertilizer, and also uh, during the process, it is scientifically proven that we don't generate any methane gas. And then only the waste which we cannot recycle, 10 to 15 percent, is taken to the landfill site. So, and the technology what we have developed uh, can be used at any scale. You can use it at your household level, you can use it at community level, uh, even at the city level. In the first picture you can see uh, there is a small composting box we have developed, uh, which is used by farmers in rural areas, and this is the picture from Ratshahi. In the next slide, you can see there is a special box, it's, it's a barrel, perforated barrel, which we are using in slum areas of Dhaka city to convert their waste into, into fertilizer. This is a picture from a medium-scale compost plant, uh, which can treat waste up to 20 tons per day. 
without creating any bad odor or without creating any methane emission. This is a technology uh, which is called box method, and we are using this technology in several cities of Bangladesh and also outside Bangladesh. This is a large scale plant uh, we have built uh, uh, just outside Dhaka in, in, in Narayanganj, where we can treat, recycle almost 150 tons of waste per day. Uh, and you can see uh, uh, this is the project which is globally the first project which, which has claimed uh, emission reduction to claim carbon credits from the uh, UN climate change uh, mechanism. So this is what we have done. And, uh, and, and now this, this technology, this method what we have developed is now being used in many developing countries. So uh, next I would like to highlight uh, one thing that 20 years back uh, we wanted to do a project with support from the government and uh, no one listened to us. After 20 years, now government of Bangladesh has changed their policy and uh, government has taken an initiative in 2012 uh, to replicate our kind of approach in all districts of Bangladesh. And uh, government has changed their policy, and we have a now a national 3R policy where uh, the policy is promoting waste recycling. So, so far, with partnership with government and also with civil society and private sector uh, we ha and, and the UN, UN organizations, we have built 60 plants in Bangladesh so far. And now, uh, and now the model which we have developed in Bangladesh uh, is being replicated in Vietnam, uh, also in Cambodia. Uh, this is made in Bangladesh model being replicated. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, recently, the government of Sri Lanka has decided that they will build 200 plants in next five years. So this is also, we think that uh, Bangladesh can offer something new to the world, which is very simple and uh, which people can replicate very easily. And also in the South Asian countries, India, Nepal, and Pakistan, they're also replicating our model. So things can change, only we need to prove that, that our model works. Now, before I, I, I go to the next topic, I would like to highlight one more issue, is that uh, there are 200,000 people who we call waste pickers, uh, they, they live on waste. If you look at the picture, the first, first, first picture, you can see there are two girls who are picking waste, and they survive on just uh, picking waste, and they work in any very hazardous working condition. So what we have done uh, in our project, that we are trying to bring these people out of the dump site and train them, give them a better working condition and better pay, and they are now working in, on, the, on the formal sector of waste management. This is the findings. This is, this is based on the findings of my colleague Makhlut Sinha's research that how can we bring the informal sector, the waste pickers, into the formal sector. So apart from technological side, we are trying to bring uh, this informal sector people into the formal sector. So I'll be now showing some impacts what are the impacts of our activity? So we've, so far we found from a research that from a recycling facility, if you would process one ton of organic waste, you can create two new jobs for the poor people in formal sector. This is one thing we, can, we have achieved. And also we, instead of dumping in the dump site, spending millions of taxpayers' money, we can, if you can process the waste, we can bring out 250 kilograms of good quality fertilizer, which is being used in all over the Bangladesh in different uh, villages by the farmers. And private companies are marketing our products. And then, this is one of the important documents is that whatever we do in the recycling sector, you must document, and research bodies must be involved. So we are, with the government of Bangladesh, they conducted research, at, uh, like uh, the BRRI, Bangladesh National Rice Research Institute, they, they work with us, the tea research institutes. We found that we can have more than 20 to 25 percent more, uh, 15 to 25 percent more yield, and we can reduce the use of chemical fertilizer, which is creating all sorts of problems in our soil. And this is already explained by Ithakar. From if we process one ton of organic waste, we can reduce half a ton of greenhouse gas. You know, in the international market, it has a price. 
And what, what is the benefit of the government also? You can reduce the waste management cost, also reduce the pollutants, the leaked water which comes out from the waste. We can have that. So this, uh, the time is short. I will uh, request you, Tikar, for the... For the uh, so one last slide. I would like to show you that by doing this kind of project, actually we can create a symbiosis between urban and rural areas. Cities are generating waste, uh, and we can process them in decentralized manner using low-cost technology and convert it into resource like, like organic fertilizer, or you can also convert it into biogas. And then we can use these fertilizers in rural areas where you can, we, it can be used to produce food for us, at the same time improving the quality of our soil, and then the food can come back to the city. So this is how we can create an urban-rural symbiosis through creating partnership, public-private partnership. All the projects we are doing is having a public-private community partnership. As our friend from Transparency International has said, we need to create partnership, that's the key. And then what we have done is that uh, uh, we have to uh, use appropriate technology. We should not wait uh, to, to in invest in expensive technology from abroad. Things are there, we can do it naturally on a very cost-effective way. Lastly, I would like to end our presentation with, uh, with what we think is that we believe it is possible to convert waste into resource by changing mindset. So if we can change the mindset, if we can think that waste can be resourced, we can, we can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you.